Now, before we get into snow metamorphism, it's important to remember that there's two main types of avalanches, slab avalanches and loose snow avalanches. Now, it's the slab avalanches that we are more concerned with. And the reason for that is that when a slab avalanche fractures, it can be more unpredictable. It can fracture all the way around us, where a loose snow avalanche usually just slides below our feet and travels downhill. They are more predictable than slab avalanches. Now, the snowpack is constantly changing, and the reason for this is that vapor actually moves up and out of our snowpack. The ground down way at the bottom of our snowpack is zero degrees, and in the winter, our air temperature is often colder than that. Vapor always wants to move from warmer places up to colder places, and so depending on how quickly or how slowly that vapor moves up and out of our snowpack, we get different types of crystals changing underneath the surface of the snow. Now, when temperatures are warmer and the snowpack is deeper, we often get a metamorphism known as rounding. And rounds are exactly the way they sound. They are rounded crystals that have lots of surface area that want to bond and connect with their neighbors. Faceting happens when we have much colder temperatures and often a shallower snowpack. It's what happens when the vapor moves too quickly through our snowpack. And facets are sugary, square-edged crystals. These crystals don't want to bond and connect with their neighbors as well. And it's often what we associate with as the weak layer in our slab avalanche problem. And another type of metamorphism is surface hoar. Now, surface hoar actually grows on the surface of the snow, but it's only a problem when it becomes buried. Surface hoar is essentially the winter version of dew. So what happens? clear, cold nights, this will develop on the surface. It's that feathery, beautiful crystal that grows on the surface. And again, it's only when it gets buried that it can become a problem and can act as a weak layer. It's the weak layer that we often associate woomphing sounds and propagation with. When we have buried surface hoar, we often have a very scary slab avalanche problem. And the final type of metamorphism is a melt-freeze crust. And this one's actually pretty simple. Essentially what happens is the upper snowpack melts due to strong sun, warm air temperature, or rain, and then very simply, it freezes again, creating a crust. Now that's not a problem when it's on the surface, but when that crust gets buried, like right here, that can then act as the bed surface the next time we get a bunch of snow on top of that. In addition to snowpack considerations, we also need to be aware of likely trigger points within the terrain. For example, on convex rolls, beneath cornices, around partially buried trees, rocky outcrops, or where the snowpack is generally thin and more shallow. These are all areas that when in the start zone of an avalanche path, we want to avoid. 